Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. My friends, I hear you loud and clear. Oh my goodness me, the amount of comments on the last video. I made a colossal mistake over here at Beefy Tunes, a fine establishment selling the finest of records, even pianos, and album artwork. Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. Eight diamond blocks each. Eight diamond blocks. I don't know why, but my brain just told me eight diamonds, you know? I didn't finish reading the sentence, I guess. So I'm over here to pay properly for my purchase of Dark Side of the Moon. And a thank you all for pointing that out. I would, you know, not want to rip off a fellow hermit. And while we're in this area, there's actually something that I can pick up. I've been working on a secret project, a top secret project. <laughs> no, not really. You'll find out in just a moment. This is the block that I need to come and get, and also the brown one as well, I believe. I've been doing a lot of just off-camera stuff, sorting out my inventory, organizing blocks, and I've been accumulating a bunch of very particular ones. And some of those blocks are right next to the Cal Marshall District. They're also next to Tango's base. I remember there was a coral reef over here, and I made sure to pick out just a few blocks, as you can see, from the very bottom, so I didn't really, like, disrupt much of the coral reef. This isn't the place for farming the blocks, but I only needed a handful. And, whoa, <laughs> this might be a spoiler. I was going to say, I didn't realise how close Falls' base was to Tango's. I love how close everyone is to one another this season. And now there is some hexagonal madness going on down here. Jeez, jeez, I'm probably spoiling Falls' episode. So there is a reason we are collecting blocks, and that is because of the Wandering Trader. I have been looking at the data pack for this, and it turns out there are over 100 trades for miniature blocks that the Wandering Trader has to offer. And I want to be prepared, because whenever I see a Wandering Trader somewhere, there's like a scramble to go and get all the blocks and trade with them. So I thought, why don't we get all of these together? And that's why I've been collecting these very particular blocks. And I'm aiming to have like eight of these stored in each of these shulker boxes. So we'll go and put in these ones right here. And some of those as well. Okay, so with these four shulker boxes, I can keep them in my ender chest, and whenever we encounter a wandering trader, we've got all of these blocks, and these are all the ones you can get the miniature blocks of. As you can see, I haven't got eight of everything exactly, but I'm trying to aim to get a reasonable amount so we can trade with them in the future. And yeah, absolutely crazy, right? There's still a few more blocks for us to gather, though. I am such a monkey. I, I'm so silly. I've been thinking, like, where is the best place to get melons from? I live in a jungle! They spawn in the jungle! <laughs> Next location, the nether. I need to grab some nether quartz ore. And now we are in need of just three or four more blocks. One of those is emerald ore, which is probably best obtained by doing some branch mining down at diamond level. And the other one is diamond ore, because I mined all of my diamond ore. So we've got the beacon here to do some mining. But the question is, where should we go to to get this emerald ore? So here is a map of our world with the commercial district here in the middle. And according to the Minecraft wiki, it's any type of mountain biome that the emerald ore can generate in. So I've highlighted all the different types right here. And if we highlight them on the map, it's actually the desert mountain and the Mesa Plateau mountain are the closest ones nearby. So I figured we'd go and investigate and see if we can actually get emerald ore inside of these biomes. I always thought it was the more foresty types of biome that you would find them in. So the program you just saw was a mist, and the only biome with the word mountains listed in it was ice mountains. All the ones that I highlighted had the M modifier, which I thought was for mountain. But in game, this is actually a totally different name altogether. It's Wooded Badlands Plateau. And I don't think this is the place where we're going to find what we need. So over here, I just wanted to show you this biome as well, as it's kind of rare. That's Cub Fan's Pyramid, by the way. This is the Eroded Badlands. I really like this biome. It looks super cool. And anyway, flying out over here, I found out that these were not called Desert Mountains, but Desert Hills. So I'm not going to risk it in this area. Okay, there we go. This biome in-game is called Mountains. And in Admist, it's not called that. It's called Extreme Hills Plus M. Very confusing. Very confusing. Also, is this is this a biome with gravel? 
Yes, this is right next to modified gravelly mountains. So, two biomes with the right word in the name. Let's dig down to the bottom of the world and do some mining. Couldn't have planned it better than this. Dug straight down, as you can see. Straight onto emerald ore. So we have, we have hit the right biome. That is, that is terrific. So I pictured myself branch mining for these ores, but then I realized we got a beacon. Might as well speed mine. And so with this session, I've certainly got... A handful of emerald ores, we got diamond ore as well, and I've taken the opportunity to actually stock up on cobble and stone and other types of stone and ores for our shop, which I'm going to lug all this stuff back there in a moment. So now we have every single trade available for the wandering trader, with the exception of one thing, and that is the shulker box, which, you know, I can't put inside a shulker box. So as we do quite often in these episodes, I've wrangled up diamonds from the shops, 47 of them, which is perfect because there is actually one more block that we need to obtain, that is the emerald block. Oh yeah, of course! We don't have to spend diamonds here, so we can get emeralds on the cheap for redstone blocks, and you know what? I'm just going to buy out the entire thing. Why not? <laughs> So there it is, we got our emerald blocks, that's the last part of the wandering trader shulker boxes, and of course, where do we get the emeralds to trade with the wandering trader from? Well, those emerald blocks. So everything we need is now in those shulker boxes. And on my way over here, I spotted this miniaturized pixel avatar of a Minecraft character. I believe it is ZF, because this is Zed's Zouchers. And the idea here is that I can get a Zoucher if I promise Zed to pay him two diamond blocks in the future. And I have to poke him in his right eye. Oh, and I get a book. Human Test Dummy. Ah. So if I need a human test dummy, then that person will be Zenaf. And yes, I signed the IOU note here. So, you know, I could just give him the diamond blocks now to be fair, but I'll wait until he asks for them. Looks like XB might be considering poking ZF in the eye now. <laughs> now while we're here in the Calmercial District, it's probably a good time to mention that this mayoral race has been taken a little bit too seriously by some. It needs to be said that we here on the server are all friends and the activities we participate in together are fun for all of us. And you know, we all want to have a good time with this mayoral race that's going on. Unfortunately, a small minority of people have been harassing some of the hermits over, you know, who should run for mayor, and that's really not cool. That's not what any of us are trying to promote at all. And I've got a video talking about this at depth if you'd like to hear more on the matter, or maybe yourself, you're angry that someone is running against someone else, and you should probably take the time to listen to this video. But yes, you know, 99.99% of you are being well behaved, and I uh, appreciate all of you for supporting us hermits. So with that said, it's time for something musical. I have been out there in a desert grinding away at getting loads of sandstone and I actually got way too much of it for the build that I have built behind me. So let's cue some music and let's enjoy this time lapse together.
But look at this gorgeous and utterly fantastic build we now have out here in the desert. And I cannot take credit for this at all, this is beyond my building capabilities. But while I was out here working on the furnace array, I kept looking over to the desert. We even came up here and cleaned up a load of mess that I had built and I kept feeling like I wanted something to be over here in this desert. It was just barren and empty and now we got a castle. But what's so strange is that same day I was watching Grian's episode of Hermitcraft and he shouted out a builder by the name of Pearlescent Moon. So as you should do when someone gives someone else a shout out, I went and checked them out because this is the Minecraft community, you know, it's all about supporting one another and I really, really love their builds. I was really inspired and I was scrolling through and then I saw this right here, this sandstone castle and I reached out to them and they were kind enough to share with me this build so that I could recreate it here in the Hermitcraft world and it is just, it is wonderful. I feel like it belongs here. As soon as I saw it, I was like, yeah, yeah, we're going to be building that on Hermitcraft. And I'm not simply just going to leave this thing now. I want to find something to do inside of here. I'm not sure exactly what, but I've got the itch to break away from our current building style and do something a little different with some decorative interiors. I might also throw some more color into the outside of this build as well. But as I said, supporting one another in the community is important. So be sure to go and check out Pearlescent Moon. There'll be a link to her buildings and Twitter and YouTube channel and all that cool stuff in the description box down below. And Pearl, if you're watching, thank you for letting me build this. It is gorgeous. And right now I can't wait to actually decorate and do something with the inside here. But that's not what I've got planned for the rest of this episode. So we have three projects here in this area. The sheep farm, the bamboo farm, and our furnace array and I think in the last part of this video we are going to cover all three of those and hopefully get them all up and running with the time that I have. As of right now though I'd like to tell you more about what I've been doing as I'm preparing to now move the storage into something more permanent and the reason that I was gathering up all of these blocks to trade with the wandering traders is because I want to do like Iskow does and organize his storage using some of the heads to represent what's going to be inside of the chest. So I actually went through and did a big clear out of all of the junk that I've been storing inside of my ender chest and I've made this more useful and pretty to look at as well because we've renamed some of these chests and I've got two types of chests. One which are related to like a specific activity or usefulness like work blocks and redstone and then I've got other ones here that are related to colors. So you can see it's labeled green simply to put blocks of that color inside of it. So we can organize with two different methods. Now these ones are likely to be changed in and out of my ender chest a lot as we work on different projects. And I kind of forgot that I'd already started work on this because in here you can see that we've got colored shulker boxes with dyes in them or blocks related to the same color. So when we go and work on a building that's going to be made out of white blocks or magenta blocks we can just pick up the relevant shulker box and throw it into our ender chest but this now has tons of well organized and useful blocks inside of it as well and one thing I love doing is just standing over there and then looking out over at the castle when we build our next tower for storage it's going to be somewhere around where I am right about now and that castle is still going to be in view so that's fantastic but when making that I had to use loads and loads of smooth sandstone which required smelting and I didn't actually use our new furnace array, I used up pretty much all of the fuel left in this thing which is temporary and so I feel like we're now ready to tear it out as we get prepared to move. So for what we're going to be doing next I needed some obsidian, I came down to this area, started mining some of the stuff and on the way back into the skeleton farm I was reminded that I got all the levels of XP for renaming those shulker boxes from this. I did a massive day long session and I filled up two entire shulker boxes worth of bone blocks. Not bones, but bone blocks. And I think all of these chests over here are filled up again. But anyway, can you hear that gargling sound? <laughs> there is something around the back here that I wanted to show you. And that is this. We've got like five different drowns down here. Now there are some clues as to how they've gotten here. They're all wearing armor and they're all holding items, although some of those items are string. So my theory was that maybe they were spawning in the water stream here that the items from our skeleton farm go through. And then somehow making their way out of there, but they're holding rotted flesh and string. I'm not really sure what the story is here. There we go, let's let them out is what I was thinking. How many of you are there? And are there any more clues as to how you got in this space? 
They appear to be more interested in something over in that direction than me. Why? Oh, you want to go to the water. Huh. You just want to go and chill in the water. That's amazing. Yep, this guy's chilling too. <laughs> and, you know, you're not even attacking me. That's just beautiful. Why can't we play like this more often, you know? Why can't we all get along? <laughs> Anyways, I, I took care of those drowns, you know. They were just entities in the world that didn't need to be there. So we need this obsidian for a nether portal, which I've constructed and linked. And it looks like we might have the ink farm mixing with this portal, which is fine. It's temporary, but it could get a little bit messy as squid come into this portal, which we're going to use to send through sheep. So all of these sheared sheep right here came from our temporary farm all the way over there in the nether. I did this on a live stream, just brought them over here. But we have a little bit of a problem. We need to breed them. We need to get the numbers up. And we need to dye them as well. So I kind of need to set up a temporary area here with some grass, some lighting, so I can manage these. And then we got to get them through into the farm, which itself is going to be yet another challenge. But first of all, let's get all of our sheep organized. Ah, the sound of sheep. Something that could drive you mad if you were listening to it for too long. And it took me too long to wrangle all these sheep up. But I got them into pens of eight. I've also bred them as well, so we've got the right amount in each. And what we're going to do is put half the amount of colours in each floor of our farm because we have four floors. That's why they're in four groups. So for 16 colours, we're going to have half of them in that side and then this side and then again another group of 16, half and half. And then I got to lure them through the portal. Now this resource pack that we have to change the dyes, it really helps you spot them out because I got to pick out all the different types, right? And now that they've got unique shapes. It's just a little bit easier on the eyes. They have all been dyed. This was very painless and now the next bit is going to be difficult, I'm sure. Reason being that I don't really see a clear way to get them all into this space unless we're to rip out some of what we've already built up above. And uh, I think it's the only way, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this. You'll see that that means replacing the minecart hopper, the rail, essentially rebuilding the entire part above it again. And it's going to be a pain in the butt, but I didn't think this through when I was building up the farm. So that's just fine. I'll accept that. Well, I've just ripped out the entire system that brings all the items down to the front here. I realized it would actually be really quite easy to rebuild. So what we're going to do is have our portal here and then block off the back. So when the sheep come through after we lure them into the portal, their only way out is straight into here. They can't go anywhere else. So I'm hoping that that will be good enough. So here we go. All I can say is wish me luck. This could go horribly wrong. So obviously I'm going to have to use a different portal to get back over here. And let's see what the damage is. Okay, I see no rogue sheep that have managed to make it out from somewhere else. And we've got a couple of sheep up there we can lure. And that, my friends, was absolutely painless. That was so quick. Come on, guy. A little, little one more step forward for you. Okay, let's give him a helping hand. And that's it. They're all in there, and they're all ready to be farmed. So now what I have to do is rebuild this little bit, move the portal up a few blocks, and just keep repeating the process. So, the nether is all clear. No sheep, no grass, no fence posts, no portal. And that obviously means that this has been a success. So you'll have to trust me when I say all the sheep are in their places. However, while building this, I had the farm running as well. And down here at the bottom, you can see we've run into a problem where there's now a dirt block under here. This can happen every now and then. And when we first built this farm, we had something in it that actually solved this problem. It was an EFO hopper clock that would occasionally send in a pulse to get this thing moving around again. So it would override this if it ever happened. This time what I've done is I've put a repeater for the input for that on every single floor. So we're gonna have one clock and then we're going to have some sort of upward signal to reach all of those repeaters. So here is exactly that. We've got a classic redstone torch tower. And notice how on this side it's always off. If this is on, it actually locks the farm out. So down here we've got our EFO hopper clock. That's going to create a pulse every now and then that resets any of these that get fixed. But also I've added this here. If this torch turns on, then it's actually going to lock every farm and stop them from running. Wait, why is it doing that? Oh, it's being bud powered by this stuff up here, I think. It's this bit of redstone right here. That's the actual reason. So we can just put a block there and the signal will go through that repeater. 
So anyway, down here in this room, there is just a, a random lever up there. I've got to find a way to make this look better. But if I hit that, now the farm is locked and it's not running, which might be useful on occasion. Anyway, it's taken me a fair bit of time to do all of this. And look at that. We got wool coming in. This, my friends, is what it's all for. <sighs> that is a fantastic sight, isn't it? And so to finish this project off, I have put glass in this room here. I've also put more blocks behind the hoppers. And that just kind of adds for the color immersion in this room. We also now have droppers on top of all of these hoppers. All the shears have been filled to the brim. And the front of the building has been figured out. If this is the front, it's actually the side, isn't it? And looking at it from this angle, you can probably figure out how I came to fill in the space with the blocks that I did. And I wanted to say that this project is now finished, but it's not. But now I can say that it is finished, and this feels very plain. So if you've got any ideas for decorations or something useful to put up here, let me know with a comment down below. And I believe earlier in the episode I said we'd be getting to the bamboo farm and the furnace array over here. You know me, always overshooting, aiming to do everything, and not getting quite all of it done. But we did build this and I had an absolute blast putting this build together which was created by Pearlescent Moon. So don't forget to go and check her out. There'll be links in the description box down below. What a remarkable building that is. And as you might have guessed, we are at the end of this episode. So if you have enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and support the series. As always, thank you for doing that. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you soon with another episode of Hermitcraft. Ciao for now. Bye bye.